Howdy, uh, in this video what I want to uh, do is uh, put a dust port, uh, semi rigid flexible uh, dust port over the top of these table saw blade. Uh, still want to be able to uh, raise and lower it a little bit left and right, so it needs to be semi rigid but um, also flexible. Um, uh, I need to uh, branch off the side of the cyclone with a uh, uh, wire connector and then I'm going to put MSC pipe up over the ceiling, a few fittings that I've got, and um, yeah, I'll be able to set it up the way I like. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, move the, uh, the motor on the dust extractor across to where that green bracket is. So I've got room uh, up the side there of the roller door to get the 100mm pipe in. Uh, so it'll be 100mm PVC pipe uh, coming off the wire junction. The 5 inch flexible hose will still run to the bottom of the table saw. But uh, the PVC from the, the wire junction across the ceiling down to this uh, flexible um, semi rigid uh, uh, vacuum hose sort of kit thing. Yeah, so uh, I'll get into uh, moving the, uh, the motor across. Obviously, the uh, motor's off the, off the board now. Just a bit of useless information. Weigh a whole minor, uh, just a French cleat. Back this board, reason being, amount of motor on here, and I'm able to lift this up on my own. One man operation, don't need two or three mates to come around and help me put something up. Now, once I've got the motor on there, I'll just put it back up on the French plate. It'll stay there until I get all the screws into the rails. After that, I'll lay it now, get it sitting up there on the panel on the workbench, drill the holes, bolt all that together, drop it back up on the French cleat. Here we go. set up, uh, cyclone reconnected again. Uh, the next thing will be to uh, uh, get the uh, wire connector and fit that off and then start running the pipe and uh, I'll show you what type of fittings I'm uh, using. Um, here in Australia we have a bit of trouble um, getting fittings or solid pipe PVC fittings to fit any of these uh, dust, you know, dust, pre much dust fittings that come in over Glasgow. To, you know, wire connectors, you know, these sorts of dust hoods and so forth. Um, it's really, you've got to make, a, you know, make up your own fittings, basically, or adapt something to uh, to fit. And, um, yeah, so I'll show you what I'll use each stage in case anybody else wants to try and go down something similar down these lines. Might find it uh, helpful about uh, what type of fittings I've used. Uh, yeah, so off with the next part now, the, the wire, uh, wire connector and then... Uh, Bit of blue blue up over the uh, ceiling. Now, this is the uh, wire connector, 125mm, 5 inch. I uh, need to make the connection between that and the end of the cyclone. Uh, the three ways I can see this uh, way of hooking or joining it together. Uh, first way would be to heat up the outside of um, heat up the outside of this uh, outlet here on the cyclone. It's slightly wider and bigger than the end of this. Uh, Y connector and heat it up, push this inside it. Uh, another way, this is just a, uh, it's called a 100mm PVC coupling. Basically, what it is is a, um, just a joiner. If you want to join two pieces of pipe together, you use one of these. Uh, when I sit that inside the cyclone, uh, it's a bit of a loose fit, not really tight, but I've got some self adhesive black rubber in a roll, just self adhesive on one side. One revolution around there um, just gives me a nice tight friction fit. So I could have that in there, run some more uh, rubber tape around there, and then slip that over the top of it, like so, uh, and then branch off and so forth from there. What I don't like about that is um, in sliding that inside the two fittings, I'm actually reducing the inside diameter of the the system by 10 mil, that's 5 mil each, each side, with wall thickness. Or the other option that I could see is uh, just bump together like that and using a piece of flexible hose, same as this stuff, 
two clips and you clip it together like so. Uh, with it bucking together here like that, what I see is I believe we're going to end up with even a, a sharper bend than what I used to have just coming straight off there with the five inch hose. By the time I get into there, that's basically a 90 degree right angle here. Uh, not an ideal sort of bend for dust extraction. Um, so if I could get this wire connected to slide inside the port on there, uh, pick up about 50 mil, uh, moving that back 50 mil by sliding inside. Uh, won't, still won't be a perfect bend, but uh, it might be slightly better. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Uh, you've got a shot to see what it goes on. Okay, as you see, change of shirt. That was real enjoyable. Glad that's over. Uh, just using the heat gun in here for. 15 minutes. Uh, really hurt the place up today. Melbourne here, it's 32 degrees Celsius. About 95 Fahrenheit in the old language, I think, somewhere around near there. Uh, could obviously feel the sweat running down my back, so no doubt you saw that. Sorry for any uh, unsightly video. Uh, so obviously, on here now. Five inch hose runs the bottom of the table, sort of back on. Got a softer bend on it and what it did have once I get the clip back on the wall there next thing is to branch off here in the 100mm to go up over the ceiling while I'm doing that this is a, what's called 100mm PVC uh, 45 degree uh, female to female elbow uh, that go in there like so same thing as before with the coupling it's a sloppy fit so we will get the, the rubber around it make a nice tight friction fit up here with a bit of 100mm PVC and then across the ceiling. Uh, I was planning on making the bins for up in the ceiling out of 245s, give me a soft 90, like so, like that. Uh, might be doing that now, luckily yesterday while I was at work, uh, stayed in the back here in the new housing state, come across some, uh, quite a bit of dumped uh, PVC pipe um, and, and uh, some large radius elbows. So uh, using those, I'll we'll get to see them shortly. Uh, so I'll get, this set, I'll get this set up there now and then uh, we'll do it across the ceiling. Okay, uh, 45 degree bends on, 100 mm PVC pipes on. That's just got to be uh, clips of the sheet of ply at some point in time, like so. Just a 100 mm clip, saddle clip. Um, one, the radius uh, elbow that I've got, have a look at these things. Nice, spinning, soft, radius, down those laying in a paddock with a heap of PVC pipe, just, you know, just chuck out a heap of other rubbish that day from obviously the contract that was doing the subdivision. Uh, it says Telstra on here. Uh, what they are is actual communication conduit, thicker walled than the uh, standard uh, drain water and vent PVC pipe. So a little bit bigger in outside diameter. So, what happens with uh, this fella here when I sit him up the top of the 100mm is a little bit, there's a little bit of play in there. So once again, out the black rubber, run that around, get a nice tight friction fit. And then it'll be time to uh, run the pipe across the ceiling. And it's just a, a test off cut piece of uh, communication uh, conduit so it's going to be held up with a 100 mil clip and what's called a um, standoff bracket so that bit screwed up through the ceiling using what's called ram set wall mates uh, real easy to use strong holding because i can guarantee myself wherever i want to put this bracket there'll be no no truss there'll be no noggins in the ceiling or anything up there uh, definitely not giving up there and putting any noggins in uh, especially not today and it'll be 60 degrees up there, um, won't be doing that. The next thing we get the uh, rubber on the end of that PVC pipe, get a nice friction fit here, then uh, get the length of uh, PVC pipe up. Okay, uh, now to get that PVC pipe across the ceiling, obviously we need to go from the elbow across to this bit of blue tape. What I've done is I've plumbed up off the centre of the table saw blade up to the ceiling, tape up there, a bit of a mark on it. So 
I now need to know what length do I need to cut that pipe. Uh, problem I've got, I've got such a big radius elbow, uh, I need to work out where the pipe meets the finish in relation to having the, the bottom of the elbow get over this blade. Uh, so I'll bring the camera over to the workbench and I'll uh, show you how I do that. Okay, so as you see, big radius, need to work out what the distance is from inside this flange end to the centre of here. You need to know this distance from there to where the pipe's going to finish inside the fitting. And you're able to see doing those line this end of the pipe up at the edge of the bench, the centre of the pipe, the edge of the workbench. Grab the square, sit that across this edge of the workbench, and then look at my pipe in relation to the square and make the adjustments until it's running parallel. So what I'm doing is I'm lining up this edge of the flange of the actual uh, elbow with the table, with the, not the table, not the saw, the um, square. Make sure I'm sitting where I want to be sitting. Move that back that way a little bit. And there I have it. If I measure the edge of the bench to where this, the end of the pipe is going to slide into this fitting, that will give me how far back from that blue type, bit of blue tape I need to cut the pipe. So inside here, this flange, the flared out section with a, uh, where your pipe slides in, that's 100 mil long. Now I tried before to get 100 mil of this pipe in there, cannot do it. Uh, goes in about 40 mil. So and that's you know, pushing it. So if I mark that clear, the edge of the pipe, the edge of the elbow, 40 mil. Look down near the bench, make it a bit easier to measure. So if I measure from that mark, 40 mil length from the edge of the fitting, I've got 480 to the edge of the bench. So from that bit of blue tape, I need to come back 480 mil, that's the end of the pipe, then the fitting goes on there. And I'll cut all that, get it up in there, then uh, mark out the holes for the saddle brakes, and uh, I'll get it uh, hung up on the ceiling. So what I've got up here is the mark, centre of the saw blade, measure back 480, the end of the pipe. I'm going to come back another 100 mil from the saddle, from that point there. The only other thing I need to do is get the correct location of the pipe, whether it's left or right of the tape, in the middle of the tape. is I'm close enough to the deep centre of the pipe. Break through the plaster a little bit and fill the head bit. Fill a hole if you like when you're using these plaster notes. Lay ourselves through. Don't believe it. Do not believe it. I reckon I want to trust. Yep. Certainly now. Yeah. Right on the edge. On this hole. And I reckon I'm pretty close to the edge of something else. I never thought I'd be that lucky. I'd be happy with that. Close as I'm going. 
going to get it. Okay, um, you know, the business in here, that's all finished off, tightened off, done. Uh, now we're going to uh, come down here with the dust kit that I'm going to use, which is what's called a 4 inch or 100 mil hole pipe uh, hose kit. Uh, blokes in Australia know a company called uh, Tibicon, where this came from, 30 bucks and 4 inch, I think the 2.5 inch one's 20 bucks. Uh, you get a dust nozzle, dust hood, uh, two screw on fittings, screw on to the actual pipe, let you uh, put your hood in there, whatever you want to do, or hook on or something else. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. And this uh, semi sort of rigid, flexible um, hose. In my application, it's not coming good because we're off the ceiling, it's going to work fine as far as holding itself. It'll still give me the options of tilting it and doing so forth and it'll hold its own shape. What I've been to, if you're coming out of a wall uh, outlet and you wanted to do something like that, uh, over that length expanded, uh, so it doesn't really hold itself too much, especially by the time you put this other fitting on, the extra weight, and your dust hood, and your nozzle, uh, you'd have to support it in the centre here. Something like that. Yeah, so we can uh, work out how we're going to join this to the elbow. Um, if I had, a, had to fan that communication conduit and the large radius fans, it was still using the 100mm drain water and sewer fittings and pipe. Um, the takeoff you know, will come, come into something like this situation. Still a fair bit of play around, you know, around the 100mm pipe to this, uh, this fitting. Take a bit of tape or foam seal or something to, to push it up in there. Um, I'll be coming off, off that elbow with a piece of the um, communication conduit. Thick. So, alright, I uh, forgot one really important part that's blast gate. So, the blast gate needs to go off the PVC pipe. So, I've cut that pipe, it's ready to go up in there. Blast gate will go on the bottom of the pipe and then this kit will go off that blast gate. So blast gate's the same as if I was using that fitting, needs the rubber in there, tight fit. Bang. So in there.
table, as you saw, had probably um, picked up about 9% of what was coming off the blade um, with a curve cut. So it's naturally sawdust that gets stuck in the, the uh, gullets of the blade, spins around, you know, it spits it out over the top. So it's obviously better than having nothing there at all. Um, the other thing is that uh, don't have all these flexible hose in the glass, pulling it in out all the time, they split over time, put an eye on that. Uh, the other good part about having the overhead um, extraction will be easier to uh, vacuum off the top of the table if I need to rather than pull out the um, shot back all the time. The other thing is I've got myself a lot thicker up here and I used to unhook this 5 inch hose from the bottom of the table saw, put in a 5 inch to 4 inch adapter in the end of the hose and hook it onto the back of the extractor. And the other just uh, comes straight off here now which is a bonus. Another thing with my dust extraction that I can mention, I vent uh, externally and uh, try and put a photo that I've got um, recently taken of the actual flue up on the roof. I did forget, or I didn't forget, I knew that the bin was nearly full over here. It does have a little plastic uh, window in the front of it, lets me know what height the sawdust is at. And normally when it gets to the top of that window, I empty it, fusing the thicknesser, and I thought I'll just finish off what I'm doing and um, then it did. No, it was too late. Um, didn't know it in here, which is a good thing. But uh, when I was out the back, I did notice the uh, house roof was covered in dust, uh, sawdust. So, bonus of having venting outside is it doesn't affect me in here if I do forget. A lot of blokes do forget and end up clouds of dust in the shop. Other thing, if I had a needle felt bag or a pleated filter, uh, I'd have to be cleaning out the, the bag. Uh, you know, rattling the handle on the uh, pleated filter, you know, for a couple of hours to try and get it clean. Uh, yeah, so well worth, um, I'm glad that I uh, vented it externally. Um, if you can do so, I highly recommend it. Uh, so that's about it for um, this video. Uh, I'd like to thank you for watching, and uh, until next time, take care and uru.